Good evening, hope you're all well. Hope some of you have been trying the pointer in the last couple of nights. If you have, you'll owe me a thank you. Or your lady might as well. Anyway, we've got some transfer rumours for you on the West Ham Transfer Rumour Show. Would you believe it? That's what we do. Uh, we're going to start with a big one. Issa Diop earlier in the week. He was linked to Manchester United for £45 million. Manchester United and two unnamed Premier League clubs. I mean... I've never understood it how someone, let's just say that this information was sort of genuine for a minute. It's, it's not, but let's assume it was. How would a journalist get told Manchester United want Issa Diop? Right, okay, that's fair enough. But so do two unnamed Premier League clubs. Well, surely you know who they are then if you know they're interested in him. I've never understood this whole unnamed club thing. Um, I get it if it's like, let's say West Ham received a bid for Diop and. It, it come out from our end that like there's a club, someone's bid for this player, but they don't want to say who it is. I can kind of get that. But when they're, they're talking like plural, there's two unnamed clubs. It doesn't really work, does it? But it doesn't take much to work them out who they would be if it was true, which is uh, Chelsea and Spurs. There's no one else. Uh, Man City don't need him. Liverpool don't need him. Arsenal's the only other club really, but they've got their £30 million centre-back returning from his loan spell in France. So you'd imagine he's going into the team next season. Um, just leaves Chelsea and Spurs. It wasn't difficult to work out. As for the rumour itself, it's not true. We know it's not true. We're going to discuss it anyway. I think he'd be an alright purchase for Spurs or Manchester United, actually. Or Chelsea, to be fair. I can see him going to any of them and getting a decent um, shot there. But a year ago, I remember talking about this particular rumour a year ago, more because of Mourinho, but for £60 million, and the fact that his value, uh, his media value, if you like, has dropped by £15 million. and plus a year ago, we were thinking £60 million. we were thinking, oh, well, we won't be, would you, would, wouldn't you? And there was a fair fee, I think, a year ago, but now it's 45 It seems quite high, doesn't it? A bit too expensive. I think that reflects two things. I think that reflects the transfer market in which we are in now, in fact, that every club's poor, and his form over the last season, his whole season's performance, I think it was all right. I don't think he had a bad season. Um, I think he was okay. A few good games, a few bad games, and a lot of all right games. Uh, I thought post-lockdown, I thought he was really good, but just before the lockdown, actually, I thought he was playing pretty badly, actually. Um, I wouldn't have been averse to seeing Balbuena come in and replace him. But he, he clawed it back um, post-lockdown. So I don't want to see the Diop and Ogbonna partnership broken up. I think that's one positive that we've got in terms of the squad. I think it's a nice pairing we've got there. And I don't think there's much to this. It's just it's just a rumour, isn't it? Anyway, this uh, this episode is sponsored by One Football. One Football app. Speaking, there's no 45 million. It's completely free. This is where I read about the rumour, actually, on the One Football app. The link is in the description. Get downloaded. It sort of interacts social media, not social media, but it allows you to have a little profile on it so you can customise what you want to get through to your phone. And when you go on and you check your feed, you get for the club or country that you've subscribed to, essentially. Um, and then you get rid of them if you want to. So I get the West Ham news articles, notifications to my phone and stuff. So is there anything juicy? Pick up my phone. Push the button and there we have it. Free, completely free. I ain't paying for anything. I'm Scottish. Links in the description below. Get it downloaded. Um, Dean Garner has come out today by Football Insider that we are open to sound Dean Garner with a price tag of 25 million. Fortunately, Football Insight is rubbish. Football Insight knows nothing. They've got no inside information. And um, this also is just completely made up. So we're not even going to discuss it. We're just going to move swiftly along to something that's got a bit more meat on its bones. That's Jordan Hugo to know that City for two million. It seems a bit low, doesn't it? For someone who's he's twenty seven years old now, so he's in his prime. I mean, everybody says twenty seven, twenty eight is prime. It's just an automatic thing to say whether it is or not their actually best playing days. No one actually knows anymore. Someone even updated this data in the last five years because it seems to be something that we just say now. Twenty seven prime <laughs> is it? Like I don't know, is anyone checked? Uh, centre backs, thirty year old prime I don't know. Anyway, Jordan Hugo banged him in last season in the Championship. Norwich City, one of the top clubs in the Championship, buying one of the last season's top goal scorers in the Championship, two million. I don't know. I think Norwich are getting the better deal here out of us. We're just desperate, um, not necessarily for the two million, but to get his thirty-five grand a week wages off the, the wage bill. I think if we got to the end of the transfer window at the start of October and he was still here, I think we'd give him away for free if someone took all his wages on. I think that's how bad it's got right now. Um, I think there's a 
there'll be a heavy bonus put in there. I said bonus, an extra payment to West Ham. Should Norwich gain promotion? Makes sense, considering one of the favourites come back up, especially as, as it stands, their squad is... They've still got Buendia, Cantwell, Lewis, Irons, and Godfrey. Should they keep all them and add to it championship players that are good in the championship, you'd expect them to come back up. Um, so it just seems a bit low. We're not going to do much for that two million, are we? But you add it all in, you add in the Jetties, four and a half million, all of a sudden you've got six and a half in. Gives you a reasonable fee for a left back or whatnot if you your scouting's half decent. And uh, Felipe Anderson. This is one rumour that's just not going away, is it? It's been sparked, or it's been fuelled, if you like, by the fact that Felipe Anderson's not been in any training photos from Scotland. West Ham are at the minute are in St Andrews up here, um, and Felipe Anderson's in no photos. Now, to, for context, either is Ogbonna or Diop, but the, the in the nose have, have suggested that Felipe Anderson's still in Italy. Now, why that is, we don't know. He could have had an extended holiday. He, he could have... He could have tested positive for all we know, and therefore he's quarantining. We don't know why. He, he might not even be there. They might be wrong. But he's not in the train photos. And there's a lot of rumours that Lazio want him back now. Uh, he was linked with Arsenal. We'll discuss that. But the Lazio thing is the one that's starting to gain a little bit of traction. Um, the fee has been banded around as £20 million. Um, Bear in mind, we probably still owe Lazio £20 million for Felipe Anderson. I'd be a bit sort of curious as to how that's going to work are they just going to call, call it quits spit shit quits no money we don't owe you anything anymore and you can have the player back or are we going to pay them 20 million they're going to pay us 20 million kind of thing I don't know it's all hearsay isn't it but I I, I get the impression we're desperate to sell Felipe Anderson and use that money that we get in or free up to bring in players that David Moyes wants here um, I think 20 million is quite low to be honest with you especially when you consider that We've paid whatever you want to believe, 36 to 42 million. It's in that bracket anyway. Whatever figure you want to pay, even 36, it's not a great look, is it, paying that much and then selling them for 20. But we're, we're desperate. We're desperate to get rid of him. We've got a bit of a problem. I say problem. Every club does. Because unlike the last couple of seasons, we now have the transfer window open when the season begins. So we will play our first three, four, five games why else the transfer window still open? And if on match day one we play Newcastle and Felipe Anderson is an unused sub, match day two comes along, we play Arsenal, Felipe Anderson is still an unused sub. His value has gone down, his value is decreasing straight away because already you, you, you know, know that David Moyes does not want to play him. Uh, so I think for players like that, should Moyes not play him, you're going to want to get rid of them before the 12th of September, which makes sense because you then want to get players in and stuff. But time's running out, isn't it? I mean, what's today's date? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the date is. Uh, the, 20, the 28th? The 28th today, isn't it? So what's that? Three weeks until three weeks on Saturday. Season kicks off. It's not long. It's not long. Right, we've got some players here. I don't know who they are and I don't know how you pronounce them, but I'm going to do my best. But in case you're thinking, who are they? i put the links to their player profiles in description so have a little look and click on them and you'll, you'll uh, be able to see so we've got Omar Colley the Sampdoria centre back we've been linked to him um, Loren Moron this Real Sociedad striker who seems pretty decent enough it's 10 and 26 or something last season for Real Sociedad touted at around about 10 million which we know we need a striker um, but I'm sort of dismissing these a little bit to be honest with you and then we've got um, Sporting Lisbon's player I mean pff, I can't see us doing business with Sporting Lisbon again after the William Cavallo thing come out. Um, we've seen the emails, haven't we? It's threatening behaviour. They called Sporting Lisbon, then called them liars and dildo brothers, so I don't really think we're going to be on good terms with them. But, pardon me, we're being linked to Jovan Cabral. I don't know. Never heard of him. Never heard of these players, I'm afraid. Um, but the links to their profiles is below if you wish to check them out. Anyway... I think that's pretty much it for the transfer rumour show tonight, ladies and gentlemen. There's not too much going on. Um, Robinson, Anthony Robinson, has joined Fulham earlier. So that's interesting because we can rule him out of the transfer targets, although I think we already had. We now know he's not coming to West Ham. But given that they've got Joe Bryan, who's done all right in the championship for Fulham, maybe he's on his way out. Are we after Joe Bryan? I don't know. Uh, I don't think we were, but given that they've now 
got an extra left back and two I don't know, it's just an interesting move by Fulham, I think. So there might be some movement there. Uh, but that's about it, really. That's um, There is a few other transfer targets. The rumours going around, but we already discussed them. We're still being linked to Ollie Watkins. We're still being linked to Eze of QPR. Ben Arama of Bentford. We're playing Bentford, aren't we? Um, next Saturday, I think it is. But yeah, next Saturday we're playing Bentford, so that'd be interesting. We've got our first friendly on Tuesday. Friendlies. Ipswich and Wickham. We're playing Ipswich and Wickham on Tuesday as well, so... Interesting stuff. The pre-season is now here. It's now alive and kicking. Um, time to get some players in, hopefully. Anyway, I'm going to disappear. So, thank you for joining me on this transfer show. If you enjoyed it, drop a like on it. Subscribe and you're out here. I'll catch you in a bit. <laughs>